back by popular demand, we've got six Gloomhaven resources. You can live without, but you shouldn't. <laughs> nah, they're really useful. They're mostly free. A couple of them have a little bit of cost. I'll explain that when we get there. Let's get started with number six. At number six, we've got gloomhavendeckbuilder.com. And I can't take credit for finding this one. This one was brought to my attention by one of my viewers, iHeartCello. Thank you so much. Really appreciate all your comments and thanks for bringing this one to my attention. This one's really cool. So you go in here, you go to abilities, you choose your class, your character, and then you can do a bunch of different stuff. You can set up a deck. And so if you're, you know, not at like, if you don't own Gloomhaven, but you love Gloomhaven, your friend has it, you can go home and you can use this to theory craft to your heart's content. Really, really cool. You choose, you know, all the cards that are in your, your deck. You can choose the character level. It'll add in the other cards. You can even add in enhancements. You know, you can change your modifier deck. You can even look at gear, stuff like that. And there is like all spoiler tags. If you go here into abilities, you switch class, you can show locked classes. And even here, they're still locked and then you've actually got to click on them. I almost clicked there. That would be a real jerk move of me right now. Um, but anyways, these right here, they are locked until you click on them. So really useful, great resource. Let's get to number five. At number five, we have the Monster Movement Simulator. Uh, it's, and I'm gonna put all the links down in the description for all this stuff. So don't worry about having to remember what these addresses are or anything. It's aluminumangel.org. And this is great for just understanding how Monster Focus works. And credit to Josh Demchak. Thanks for watching, thanks for commenting, thanks for bringing this one to my attention. So you can just, you know, place the monsters, place the main monsters you want. Here's the orange is the active monster whose turn it is. Then you place a character and then you can adjust what it's doing right down here. So let's say it has move four, right? Who's it going to focus on? Oh, there. It's And you've got these little tabs over here. It's showing the movement. It's showing who it's going to focus on, etc. Very, very useful to understand monster AI. So and to solve dis disputes. So if you've got a computer by you and you're playing Gloomhaven, your friend's like, no, no, they're gonna attack you. And you're like, no, they're actually gonna attack you. This is the tiebreaker and it will definitively tell you. I tested this in a bunch of scenarios. It was right every single time. I even compared it uh, to the board game geek quiz. Maybe they're created by the same person. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Anyways, really good, useful resource. At number four, we've got the Gloomhaven Helper app. This is just great for reducing all of the admin work that comes along with Gloomhaven. You know, it's gonna keep track of monsters and their hit points and their conditions and all that sort of stuff. It's gonna make it really simple to manage and it's gonna help you save time each time you play. For some people, they don't like the, the electronic part um, I think it's okay, although I am a tactile guy, I do like to hold stuff, and so I generally play without the apps. However, the apps are very useful, they're very efficient, they're very well done, this is no exception. Bizarrely enough, it is free for Android and desktop, but it costs money for iOS. This is, I actually thought this cost money because I have an iPhone. It's $6.99 in the App Store, but it's free on Android. I have no idea why. And it's free for desktop too. I downloaded it. It's free. I Just testing for this video. I don't get it. And it's, so it's free for some of you and not free for others. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it's still really good though. At number three, we've got three different FAQs. Yes, three, but you'll probably only use two of them. The first one here is an official FAQ for the characters and it talks about essentially problematic cards. Be very careful here. There are no spoiler tags in this. If you scroll down, 
you're going to see potentially some classes that you haven't unlocked. So you may just have to scan for the name. You can see like Tinkerer, right? Brute, Spellweaver. Uh, naming convention changes a little bit. But anyways, um, so just be very careful. But it is very useful for some problematic cards. Next, we've got the official FAQ for g the game right? It's just got a ton of stuff through here. Ability plus X versus ability X. Active area, card recovery. This is a great resource in addition to the rule book. I've used it a ton just to, you know, make sure that I'm not screwing up any fringe stuff. I mean, I'm pretty competent, but even still, I still make mistakes. There are so many little things to remember. Everybody is making mistakes. Anyone who says they're not making mistakes, you're clearly a lot smarter than me or you're not being truthful anyways very very useful and then the third this is the change log from the first to second edition so this is very useful for me because i actually have a first edition scored it back in 2017 through an extreme miracle just yeah my chances of getting it were very low i didn't even kickstart it that's the thing anyways that's a that's a story for another day before we get to the next two if you're liking the video, please go ahead and hit the like button. Also, I wanted to announce that I am starting a Patreon. I've been asked by lots of people to start a Patreon, so I've gone ahead and started one. The link is down in the pinned comments. I'm going to have all kinds of cool exclusive access on there. I'm going to have campaign plays from Gloomhaven and other games on Tabletop Simulator. I'm gonna have Gloomhaven digital campaign plays, and these are gonna be raw and unedited with all my thoughts as I play. It's not gonna be live, it's gonna be recorded, but it's gonna be unedited, and it's going to be only for my patrons. It will never get posted anywhere else, and I'm gonna continuously keep putting in this campaign footage so that all my patrons have tons of access to, you know, see my thought process and watch how I play the game and etc. So it should be really, really fun. Also, there's going to be voting rights on my next game, what games I'm going to play and, and produce guides on, stuff like that. Tons of exclusive access. Really, really cool. Make sure you go ahead and check it out. And you're supporting the channel. I'm a small channel. I need your help. I need your support. Let's get to number two. At number two, we have the personal quest guide. And personal quests are kind of one of my pet peeves. Um, I've actually got a video, uh, my favorite house rules for Gloomhaven. And personal quests is one of the things I house rule because I think they're just, they're kind of annoying. That's a little bit blunt, but they just don't really work that well. And watch the video, you'll see exactly why. But here, if you've got a personal quest that's really hard, like kill this random monster that you've never seen before, this is going to show you exactly which scenarios to go ahead and accomplish that personal quest. And it just makes things a lot simpler so that, you know, you're not stuck with one class for, you know, way, way too long. You can be like, guys, let's go here. I know that some of this monster type is here and I'd like to make a little bit of progress on my personal quest too. At number one, we have the YASS storage solution, the yet another storage solution. So storing Gloomhaven can be a massive pain. And if you don't store it properly, it can be really hard to get to the table because it takes you too long. This is a cheap way of storing Gloomhaven in the box. It's not a perfect fit though. There is lid lift, but it's still quite cheap and it's quite effective. Um, I have used some of it. I'm actually going to go through it step by step and produce a video on it. However, I only have the Plano boxes at this point in time and I haven't done the rest, but it's got a comprehensive step by step. So Ryan H, well done. He did it a long time ago and a lot of people have used this storage solution. Um, so yeah, step by step shows you exactly what to do and in what order. Don't forget, there's a link down here somewhere where you can actually print out. It's a link to a printout for the monster uh, for this part right here. Let me go back up. For this part right here, there's a printout now of this so you don't have to write it out. Somebody created it. You just go there, you print it off, you stick it in, you set it up exactly how they've set it up. You're looking at maybe like 35 bucks 
Whereas, you know, you a broken token or a broken token organizer is going to be like a hundred bucks or something. And this apparently works really well. I will do a video. Down in the description, I've put links to these Plano boxes. I get paid a small commission if you buy them through my link. And if you want to do that and support the channel, I really appreciate it. That's pretty much it. Hopefully these have helped you. Again, if there's any other you know, interesting Gloomhaven aids out there, other cool stuff that I've missed. And make sure and watch my other video as well. I've got another video where I've got other useful resources. I'll link that in the description as well. There's gonna be a lot of stuff linked in this description. <laughs> Anyways, make sure that you watch that and that, you know, you, you let me know how it goes if you try this. And again, thank you so much for watching. A special thank you to all my subscribers. I couldn't do it without you.